The euro is on the move today, falling to its weakest level in 17 months against the U.S. dollar. The single currency took out the 113 support level and the 112 support level following the European Central Bank's monetary policy announcement. Now, the ECB rate decision was expected to be a big one because they're one of the very few central banks still taking policy actions at this time. Now, unlike the Federal Reserve, which is in the process of raising interest rates, the ECB took a move today that actually added stimulus to the economy, and hence the euro crushed was crushed as a result. Now, this decision that they made, for the most part, was widely expected because what they did was they lowered their economic projections, they cut their growth and inflation forecasts, and they rolled out a new targeted long-term refinancing operation. Now, this new Teltro operation was basically to address some of the bonds that they have in place that were set to mature um, next year, in June of next year. The reason why they needed to take action now was because that um, once those maturities fall underneath 12 months, they're subject to new regulations. What made the ECB rate decision such um, a big one and had such a negative impact on the euro was twofold. First, no one necessarily expected to, them to commit to the decision today. They could have waited to April, they could have waited to June, but they felt that because the economy was so weak and growth and inflation and the trends were um, not going to improve anytime soon, they felt the need to, to make that announcement um, this month. In addition, they provided some details. They said that this would last um, for two years. So even if they had made some announcement today, they were expected to be short on details. And the fact that they pretty much had a unanimous decision on what um, to, to, to kind of create in terms of the next um, refinancing operation shows you know, how worried European policymakers are about the outlook for the Eurozone co economy. But the nail in the coffin was the change in forward guidance. They had originally said that rates would remain unchanged um, until at least the summer of this year. Now, they say that rates will remain unchanged at least through 2019, which means that no rate hikes are coming this year. The soonest we'll get um, any type of tightening is going to be in 2020. The ECB is worried you know, about what's happening in the domestic economy. Italy is in recession. Germany is at the brink of recession. And we have you know, global um, growth concerns along with the possibility of a disruptive Brexit. So all of that has kind of really weighed heavily on the euro and also driven German 10-year bonds yields to their lowest lowest level in, uh, since 2016. Now what's interesting about this is that the last time German bond yields were at these levels, Eurodoll was actually trading um, around 112, which is where we were earlier today. But that was before, and it came right before it dropped from 112 to 110. So I think that's the same path that the Eurodollar is headed for over the next couple of weeks. Now whether or not that's going to happen tomorrow, since we're already on the 111 handle, hinges on the U.S. non-farm payrolls report. And the job report is strong and very strong, meaning that we get you know, payroll growth in excess of 180,000 and wage growth at 0.3% or more. And the unemployment rate you know, is holding steady. Then we could see 110 you know, before the end of the week or you know, early next week. However, if non-farm payrolls does pair back like economists expect, because we did have a very strong month um, previously. Then we could have a little bit of a relief rally in the euro, but that's going to invite sellers. And we're going to look at that as a better level to get into short euro positions for an eventual move to at least 110.